Who's my guy? There he is. There he is. Philly, Philly's in the building. One top of Philly. I need to know where you're from. Please let Kevin Hart know where you're from. Oh. Represent your city right there. What up with you, Jack? Hart. What up with you, man? Kevin Darnell Hart. Kenny Barnes. I love gentlemen. you. Kenny Barnes, ladies so, and gentlemen. So, so how, how's the Invisalign going? Oh man, I'm uh I'm probably seven trays behind now. I'm, Are you? Uh, I, yeah, I think I I finished it, and then after finishing it, I I stopped using it, and then I said, well, let me go back and use some of the trays again. I don't know what those trays are, so you know I don't think my teeth is grouping back up the way they once were. I think I've went into a a, a good place, but I definitely as soon as we out of this need to go to the dentist and say y'all got to break this gang up. Yeah, y'all got to tell these people to move back again. You know, this back row, this back how, row getting active. How, how is that? Beautiful? First of all, congratulations. We have a new addition to the family, the baby. to the Hart family on the way. Another baby coming, man. Yes, yes, sir. Are you ecstatic. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. You know, excited to to see what we're having. Excited to have uh, another loud mouth in this big ass house. Um, you know, I think that right now I'm doing something that is not in my family tradition at all. You know, I don't, I don't have, we don't have the big families. We don't have tons of brothers and sisters. So the fact that, you know, we'll be a family of six now, you know, wow. that's, that's absurd. That's unheard of. So wow. beyond excited, man. Yo, that man, I'm, I want to say this, man. And, it, and it's, I want to kind of close out with this, but I think I'm going to start with this since you just mentioned it. At the okay. end of the day, you know, our parents put their fears on us, right? Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. feel like growing up like you and I did, you know, we had this certain affection for our friends because of that, right? And we and our parents went through what they went through, and rightfully so. I mean, they were the, love, the flower children. They came out of, you know, segregation and all these things. And their people put those fears on them, those generational fears mm -hmm. on them. But I look at what we're doing, Kevin. I want to applaud you, man. I'll, I'll give you your flowers several times through this, but we made family a priority. Yeah, we made family a priority, bro. Yeah, and it started with our friends. Well, the the beauty of it, I think, is you know you're you're doing it in a in a time where it it isn't the thing, but I think embracing it at the level that we're doing, we're making it a thing. Yeah. You know, uh, once upon a time before Cosby, you know this this shit came out, and you know. Right is what it was the huxtables right yes you know when you look at the huxtables you look at what that was that's what you know as a black family you you aspire to be it's like right. i want that i want to i want to have that man i want the the big family and the successful the the mom and dad or whatever that world is i would love to have that and now you know being in a place where it's like i possibly can um I'm creating something. I'm creating something that hopefully my kids stay true to and follow. So, you know, in a perfect world, if this happens, man, I'm on a, uh, I'm on cloud nine. Yeah, I'm on man. cloud nine because of it. You yeah, know? and I love your team, man. Like all of your friends, you've been friends with all of your adult life for sure. Yeah. Um, and some of them even younger than that. But you know, that's important, man. Like I, I was tell, I was telling, having a conversation with my mother-in-law, and I was like, you know, it's like we grew up. Like, my friends were my family. We moved. I remember when I first met you in L.A., like, we had just moved to L.A. together, like, trying yeah. to figure it out. And I applaud you for taking your team on your journey with you. Like, yeah. that's a commendable high five you deserve, my brother. No man no man left behind. No man or woman left behind. Um, I love that. I think, uh, you know, for, for my team, the Plastic Cup Boys, you know, you're talking about a group of guys that's got, we got years in. Yeah, years. So yeah. the the fact that I'm now taking these guys uh, from a place of friendship to now business, um, and we found success in a whole and as individuals, that's uh that's big. That's not yeah. big for me. That's big. That's big for us because yeah. ultimately our success is is the biggest and best joy. You know yeah. what I mean? When we look back and we can all do things together, say we did things together. It's about that, man. It's about the stories. When yeah, you get man. older, it's about sitting on that step, sharing them stories with whomever, however. Yeah. And watching y'all talk shit and snap back and forth, I must say, it brings joy to my day. Yeah, I got a happens. bunch of ugly ass friends. I got a I got a batch of unattractive, <laughs> unattractive dudes that I that I roll with. This quarantine ain't been nice to none of them. It's a, <laughs> it's a batch. 
It's a batch of fucked up over there, man. I, you know, well, we all we all well, zoomed the other day. I hung up. I said, I'm not. Yeah, I saw up. that. I saw the yeah. zoom. I was like, yo, what does Spank have on his head? No. That didn't look like a do rag. That looked no, like Spank. Spank's hair has has grown into something that's not describable. It's Spank <laughs> has a beard on his head. He has a beard on his head. He doesn't. He's he's lost care. Yeah, he has, Spank yeah. isn't washing regularly. And what's up with OG's backboard to his bed, bro? That joint had to be like a foot high. <laughs> Joey's sleeping Joey. on the twin bed. He's sleeping on the twin bed. Joey's yeah. 50 years old with a twin bed in this place. It's, it's crazy. But <laughs> well, he got a cold old school you bought it. But I, I want to take it back. I want to okay. take it back. And okay. I like, you know, I like to tell these stories, Kevin, because I've been in your life for it'll be two decades almost yeah. like, in your life. Maybe and, a very long time. And I and I really, really I liken your early journey to what rappers were doing in the mid nineties. Because okay. and I say that because you took your crew, you were city to city. I remember getting the call one day, like, yo, Kev wants to come, you know, do the club. I was like, Hell yeah, like that motherfucker know everybody I know. He's he's funny. If I can get him on the mic, that'd be even better. But like you literally went city to city and your approach to comedy was even different then. Well, I mean, you it's a it's a people business. You know, it's a people driven business, relationships. It's all about relationships and more importantly, it's about connectivity. So yeah. when you're around the people, you become the people. Yeah. When you separate yourself from people, then you forget how people move and how people are. Come on. Um, I, I think I think for me, early on in my career, it was about making sure that I engage as much as I can with the people that I'm ultimately trying to be in front of, right? You know, I can't give you guys material. I can't give you, you know, content if I don't understand you in a nutshell. Right. So my feet were on the ground. Yeah. My feet were on the ground. The shaking hands, saying what's up, face to face conversations. Those those relationships from 15 to 20 years ago are some of the best relationships that I have because we all got a story of remember when, yeah. but you remember I'm still the same dude. Fact. I and, that, and, that, and that's a hard task. And, and I'll say this, the, the, the task of remaining, you know, you know, the human you were, right? Because things come, life happens, friends, this, that, and the third, but you have been consistent the entire, the entire time. The, I mean, literally the entire time. You're one of probably two handfuls tops out of all the people I know that are like that. Well, you know what? I mean, I think some people, some people can't separate the, the conversation, right? Like some people think that you can't be the same. You can be the same person with change. Your yeah. change is just growth. Your change is growth. So, come on. so my, my change has come in me just becoming an adult. I don't, I'm not out like I used to be. I'm not, running the scene the way that right. I once was, but I can't. I got a bunch of kids. I'm married. I'm in the house, yeah. right? That doesn't mean that you've forgotten that. That means that you've just grown past that stage for you. For me, yeah. I had to get past that stage. Evolution. The same guy. Yeah, evolution. You still the same guy? My, my energy is the same. My conversation is the same. My relationships are the same. But I just don't need to do certain things that I once did. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you have forgotten. It just means that you move to a place of difference. And, and people all. that and people that don't understand that weren't meant to be on the rest of the journey with you. I truly believe that. Um I do I do want to say this too, man. I remember prior to 2002 when when Paper Planes came out. Uh I remember you when we moved to LA and I would see you around and I see you in the comedy clubs and moving around and then when Paper Planes hit I was like, yo, like, dude. Paper soldiers, you saw paper soldiers. Paper, paper soldiers, soldiers, paper soldiers, yeah. yeah, paper soldiers. And then I was like, yo, dude, like, is really, like, present on screen. And then when Soul Plane hit, I was like, oh, shit, like, dude's a star. Like, and mind you. Soul Plane was supposed to be the biggest movie to ever touch the theaters. No, but it was, it's a, but listen to me. It is, it is a cult classic. It is yeah. a hood classic to yeah. this day. Yeah. But I want to I wanna talk about that because I think that, like, from that point, you went on and obviously you had Little Grown Man, 2008, 2009. You had Tremendously Funny, 2010. You started 
monetizing with the laugh of my pain and let me explain going to movie theaters. But from 2002, when you did Paper Soldiers with Dame Dash, mm -hmm. first of all, for, if I ask this question, first of all, what, what was it like working with Dame Dash in those days? Dame? Dude, Dame is, Dame is a good dude. Dame is, Dame is misunderstood. You know, <laughs> because Dame he put was, you out there. He put you out there in a major way. Dame, you weren't there yet. Dame is a guy that I'm always going to just simply give, give his props, or as we're saying today, flowers to. Because Dame gave me an opportunity when there were no other opportunities. Uh, I think where Dame gets misunderstood, Dame's passion um, is sometimes misunderstood for crazy aggression. And he's he just passionate about the shit that he believes in. He's, and he's also aggressive, but it's, it's good. You're right. He, no, he is aggressive, but it's there's a, there's a high level of passion yeah. within it. Now, granted, you know, you can't just move a certain yeah. way or do certain things, right. especially not in today's time. Um, but his heart is in a good place. Yes. You know, I, I think the approach may be wrong at times. But for me, at that time where Dame and I uh, came across each other and Dame said, yo, Kev, I got a movie, I got an opportunity. It was nothing but genuine. It was nothing but yeah. dope. My, my experiences with Dame have been nothing but good. Yeah. I see where some are different. Yeah. But I know that the man is just a passionate guy. He no. wants to put people on. He yeah. wants to see people self-evolve and develop. Like, that's yeah. a real thing. I'm, I'm going to tell you this, and this is a fun fact. Without Damon Dash, there would have been no Rockefeller. And, no. You, could, you know, you could give credit to, obviously, Biggs and Jay, but Dame fought tooth and nail in the same aggressive style that he did for Jay, that he did for you. Because I remember that movie. You had a lot of creative freedom to be you. And I yeah. think that was the first time on – because you had one other project before, and you had some TV, something you did. But it was house. like, that. yeah, that project, though, I was like, this motherfucker is funny. So I, back to the question. 2002, Paper Soldiers, people are aware. Soul Play, they're like, oh, shit, dude, it's funny as a month. Then mm -hmm. the comedy game, now, mind you, you were doing things along the way. But I think 2008, 2009, when you came with Little Grown Funny Man, like, that was like, wait. And then you coming out the part. next two to the movie realm and then it was lights out Joe Jackson after that. Well it's all it's all in the it's all in the titles. You know, the titles play a major part in where I was at that time. You know, Grown Little Man, that was the first my first special. So within yeah. the titles like look, I'm I'm little but I'm still a grown man. Yeah. And I'm gonna do I'm I'm gonna do my grown man work within this special. And doing that, I felt like okay, I did it. But now people are doubting, like, if I can do that or if that was a fluke. No, guys, I'm funny. Right. Seriously. Like, I'm not, I'm like, not joking. Seriously. Seriously. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm funny. Okay. After doing that, was seriously funny. I said, well, I now got the opportunity to reach a new level, but let's take a different approach. I'm going to allow you guys to laugh at my pain. I went through some shit. For Here's real. my pain. But, but, but I want to say something. That was so brave of you because being your partner and it's like being behind the scenes and knowing – for you to put all of that, yeah, you left no room for error. It was like mm -hmm. it's out here now. What, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the shit. That's that's what I. That's uh, what I think is a hidden talent. I don't. I don't care about being flawed. Uh, you know, there is no judgment. You can't. You can't judge a guy that has no worry right. about what you see. My my book is forever open. There's tons of pages in it. You can get to whatever page you want. I'm never going to withhold information because my career is built on transparency and authenticity. So whether you're a fan or not, you have no choice but to respect me as a person Yeah. because my life growth is on file. Yeah. Fuck ups and all is all here. Unapologetically. It's all here. So everything that I went through, I have no problem with displaying that because I'm not displaying it just for me. I'm displaying it for people to understand that it's okay to be human. Hey, my mistakes are all here so you don't have to make the same mistakes. Right. Look at this shit that I done did and the way that I did it and some of the shit that hit the fan for me. You don't have to do that. You don't want to do it. Here, here's, you get a clear view into the world of what it looked like 
and what yeah. it could be. So don't you do that. That's that's but, what that's about. But that but that transparency, I want to say that, that transparency makes you a superhero. Because I think that because society tells you that when you make a mistake, it's tr so tragic that there's no coming back or there's no remaining friends with your your ex-wife or there's no re rebounding from what like you've proven that you can make a mistake not that you should or always want to but when you do in the event that you do there is a fucking way to you know fix it to make I, it whole i said this i forgot who i who i said it to but i was like you know what happened what what happened to to oops and my bad Come on. When when did that go away? Don't start, man. Look at look at this. One here, one there. These dogs spoiled, man. Move. Yeah. What what happened to oops in my bad? Wow. That there, there was a time where my bad. That meant something. Yo, my bad. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. It meant it actually meant, yo, I fucked up. I'm sorry. But it was in a time of my bad. Oops. Oh shit. Oops. Oops was a oops meant something. Oops right. was fuck. Oops, I didn't know that that could. Ooh, yeah, people yeah. knew. Oh, he didn't mean that. Right, said, I'm tripping. He's right. tripping. It's, it's he wouldn't have did that. Ain't nobody gonna say oops and 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 do that. And and he said oops. He said my bad. We forgotten the days. Right of oops and my bad. Yeah, we forgot that. People do shit, and they, there was once upon a time where a sorry meant something. Hundred percent. We but we now have we we're, we went past that, and and there is no space for remorse, which yeah. is kind of a fucked up thing. And it, because it's that, because and, of social media, for, though. For my it. generation, that's what we that's what we were built on. Hundred percent, and it's because of social media, though, right? Because everybody's judge and jury on social yes. media, and. Yes. The thing I love about you, because even when you went into Let Me Explain, right? You know, did numbers at the movie theater. You defined yourself as a heartbeat productions is now an entity. And you're cut. But mm -hmm. like that, let me explain. And this, that was set fire to their ass, right? Mm -hmm. The fire you know, was put the, put, put the set fire to the bitch flame <laughs> on the comments. Put the fires <laughs> on the When that happened, I'm literally sitting in Atlanta. In the front row, you got me some amazing tickets for Jessica and I, by the way. And I'm like looking at this motherfucker. I'm like, yo, like he's 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 like Neo in the Matrix. Like he he has the glow. It's like, <laughs> like he has the glow. And, 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 and to be honest with you, to be very honest with you, we know many of people that have the talent, have the savoir faire, and don't make it. But to see yeah. you in that moment, look at the fire. The setting fire, set fire to the goddamn. I screen. love it. I love um, it. But but, I love but it. you really had the glow, bro. And mm -hmm. I think and that was twenty thirteen. Mm -hmm. That was after twelve or thirteen in that space. Yeah. Yeah, and you and after that you went fucking nuts. You went nuts, Kevin. I'm talking about like shit you could never imagine. But how did yeah. that feel to come out of that honesty and vulnerability and then set the screens across the world on fire? I think it, it it's in the, it comes from this, all right? You have success that's on paper, that's, that's traced back to analytics, numbers, those things equal success. Right. And they're, they're going to be there, right? And my numbers in that space are stupid. They're through the roof. Right. But I have a personal level of success that I'm chasing. Right. That nobody really knows outside of me. Right? Right. Am I the funniest guy? No. Is my you, fun, you funny be, as a motherfucker, though. Is my plan to be the funniest guy? No. No, it's not. Am I one of the hardest working people out there? Absolutely. Do I want to be the hardest working guy? It's not my goal. Right. If it happens, it happens. But what I do know is that I have a talent for putting my mind to something and finishing what I said I want to do. That's my talent. So I have this crazy list that only I have access to of shit that I want to do. 
that I'm slowly checking off. That's right. So when you're talking about the big screen, you're talking about, you know, movie star, big comedian, producer, you're you're looking you're looking at the shape and making of a of a mogul. And flawed or not, a mogul is just a person that does so many different things at a high level. That's what I'm trying to do and become. I wanna, yeah. I wanna do a bunch of shit. Yeah, no, you but at are a high level. You always, you are, and you always said you were going to do. And I want to say this. I don't know if you're reading my notes. You know, I have. I'm, I'm a professional. Although we're friends, okay, there are things you. that I you. have to. And I was going to mogul next. This is why okay. we're spirit animals. So, you really are a mogul, Kevin. Like. Again, I mentioned it when you took, you know, let me explain and laugh at my pain to the theaters. I was like, Heartbeat mm -hmm. Productions is is on it, right? Mm -hmm. I saw this glow doing Let Me Explain. I felt it was on another level. The, the movies, like I said, went to another planet. And then all of a sudden, like, I mean, if you think about Vita Hustle, if you think about Laugh Out Loud Network, if you think about all the things that you're doing. Now, by the way, that what the fit shit. I, I have a character. Funny as hell, man. I, no, no, time, time out. His name is Rick, right? Fitness Rick, right? Yeah, fitness Rick. Fitness so, Rick. So, so Kevin, so Kevin, I have a character that's that's twelve years old. Yeah. Called Rick Bon Jovi. He's yeah. A little Bon Jovi and a little Rick James. Yeah. Yeah. I have to come do an episode of what the fit in my snakeskin boots with hey. your eighties outfit on. Hey man, I when I tell you, fitness Rick, man, stop. Get down, Watsy. I tell you, Fitness Rick makes me laugh so hard, man. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> fitness Rick, we're going to get at it today because it's Friday. It's fun. <laughs> it's Friday. Oh, and it, Rick. <laughs> yo, and, the, and you and Boss, by the way, one time for Boss Everline, your train. Shout out to Boss. Y'all's relationship, and I know y'all fist fight before you could tell in your energy, but like, it's like, when I say y'all motherfuckers together, Kevin, are the funniest duo. <laughs> Hey, on the I, <laughs> I will give you, you know what, man? I'm going to say, you just made me want to tell a story. Please. I'm going to tell a story. I'm going to save it for confessions for confessions from the heart, but I'm going to give you a piece of it. No, you fucking give it to your brother. What are you Listen, talking about? When me and, Balls, me and Balls fight, we fought, but there was a moment where I like blacked out and I really was like, I'm going to whoop his ass. I'm going to whoop this big nigga's ass. I said, Listen. Kenny, Kenny, when I tell you, as we got closer to the landing, as we got closer to the landing, you know, you start to, uh, you start to. Wait, wait, you just went out. Now you're up. back. Go ahead. You went, go ahead. You're you back. Got it. I said, as you get closer to the landing, you start to sober up and you like, I was tripping. <laughs> I was tripping. Hey, yo, I just want to say this, though. Kevin Hart, y'all might think he's little, but um, he's strong. Listen to me. I, we, were, we were taping the Black Poker Stars <laughs> Invitational, and I, it was this scene on BET. I hosted it. God bless Cat Williams for not coming down for his duties. But I ended up hosting that because Cat, uh, for, Cat Hart didn't come. And it was a scene between him and Ali Al, and they were fake beefing. And I, it was my thing to kind of hold, yeah, hold me back. back. Yeah. Yeah, like, bro. Like it was trying. I was trying to hold a Mack truck back. Like you, you, I was like, this motherfucker is strong as shit. Oh God! <laughs> but I, I, I want to hear this. I want to hear this on your, you know, from the heart. I'm gonna do uh, it. I'm gonna do it today. I'm gonna do please, it. Today. Please, because when I'm I tell you, I saw depth. that footage and then it went out. I'm like, no. We're, we're I'm gonna tell it. I'm gonna tell it in depth. I'm gonna tell it in depth today. Well, Stop. I love. I love when you guys are together because he fake serious. You're all the way funny, and it's a comedy connection like no other. And, and what the fit comes on how many times a week, or what is that? What the fit is uh, it's a, it's my YouTube show. So what the fit? I do like one episode. Uh, I believe it's every two weeks, every week or every two weeks. I okay. air one. New ones hit today. So if you guys aren't familiar with the show, just go to YouTube, go search what the fit. Uh, I mean, we're on season three now, so I've been doing it for a while. Funny show, though. and uh, boss and I are very funny on the show. Very, uh, very Fitness very Rick funny. and Rick Bon Jovi are on the way, TKBS. I promise you I'm going to make that happen. It. Even I though I got to fly out there in the middle of 
the Corona, aka Cinderella. <laughs> um, big shout out to you, Fabletics. Fabletics, yeah. new partnership yeah. for you. I, I got all... something for you before you tell us about that, though. Okay. You know, I just want you to know that your friends and your followers pay attention to what you ask for on social media. And this okay. morning, you were like, I'm slowly defining, basically, you were saying, I'm slowly defining what this is. I want you to help me out. Mm -hmm. F on your chest is something you kept saying, but I got an idea for you. Okay. Watch this. You ready? Mm -hmm. WTF. Hold on. WTF is what the, you know, fuck in popular yeah. culture, right? But yeah. what the fab, what the fantastic, I mean, we could come up with so many WTFs. Okay. And really make it a thing. You hold on to that. Just marinate on it. If you no, like no, it. no. I like, I like it. I like yeah. it because the whole, the whole thing about me and Fabletics, it's more, it's more about the, it's more about the partnership that that now has been formed like you know we we got an opportunity to grow we got an opportunity to grow something that's so unique so different uh but inclusive you know right. when you think about the major brands of the world and you think about all the things that these major brands have done uh they've done a good job of building the elite but there's a large portion of people that get left out and the reason why i i, I wanted to join and why it made sense because I'm I'm a people person, you know. I'm the guy that's that's solely trying to get everybody to be a part. I want right. everybody to be involved. I want everybody to know that they can, and that comes with motivation, inspiration, but more importantly, a driving conversation where your product is a reputation of that. Fabletics is that. So right. you know, affordable prices, but also quality clothing. And you know, it's within the space of health and wellness. Everybody knows I'm I'm about that life. So yeah. I don't attach myself to things that I don't believe. And the success that they've had with women's is unreal. Trying to match that success now with men's is my priority. And it gives me a new space to to build and grow. I told you I yeah. like to do things that I can see the success come. Yes. I can see it grow in tears. So starting out at ground zero. But eventually getting to the fucking top floor, that's the priority right now. Yeah, man. And we've seen you done multi-million dollar deals with Nike mm -hmm. and H&M mm -hmm. and all these things. But to see you effectively connecting with lifestyle, Kevin Hart lifestyle. Lifestyle. Brand. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I don't know if you got lifestyle from me, but fine. But the lifestyle, <laughs> the way that you're choosing your partnerships is really genius. And... I want to congratulate you because you just sold out on the first offering of your Fabletics partnership. Yeah, yeah. There's four more days. Sold I guess. Out. Yeah. Sold out. So four so more I'm days, like you're re-up? So like four days is the re-up, correct? Four days, we are relaunching again. Okay. We did our beta test where we just put some of it out. Uh, I mean, dude, when I tell you we were shocked that it went so fast, it, it blew our minds. So we want to make sure that we have the amount in stock that we can actually fulfill the uh, orders as they're taking place. So we got four days from now. Just go to my page. Actually, go to my Instagram, my story. Swipe up, you'll see it. Join my VIP list uh, to try and secure a spot for you as a launch. But I'm telling you guys, I wouldn't attach myself to, to BS. I've yet to do that. I've right. never done it. Um, if I can't believe it, if I can't be true to it, then it doesn't fit me. It doesn't fit what I do. So health, wellness, lifestyle, it's its what I'm about. Uh, that's why you see this Vita Hustle world. That's my yeah. product. Yeah, no, I, think, I, I was about to say, everybody is all, always asking me about vitamins and mm -hmm. supplements to keep it going. Then I see you come with the vital, and I'm like, yo, he is in his bag. Because those of us who work out all the time, you need. You need it. You need, you it. need it. So tell but us about Vital Hustle. Mine's is uh, Vita Hustle is basically you got a natural, you got a natural product. You know, I said, what what gives me my my go? And I said, I would love to develop and create that thing that's a justification of how I move around in a day. Yeah. I'm a 12, yeah. 12 hour, 14 hour on my feet, For running go back. So, so what's the thing that's natural that I can create to align myself with that? So for about the last four years, I had Vita Hustle just in the works, man. We did a multivitamin. I did a vegan protein. I did a whey protein. I did a vegetable uh, mixture with fruits and vegetables at the same time. All yeah. of the things that basically you need to strengthen your immune system to help you get up and get out. 
I'm not a get ripped program. I'm not fit right. abs. I'm not muscles. You're not. You're seconds. not your brother. Your brother, no. The Rock. I know. No, I know. I'm not. I'm not that. I am. I am lifestyle. I am. Guys, you need this because this is what your body needs. Here's the healthy ingredients that you need to perform at the highest level. That's what Vital Hustle is about. I it's doing very it. well too, it. man. We're doing very well. I love well. it. Another one of the most dynamic duos in film is you and The Rock. Um, Jumanji is one of my favorite. <laughs> Thank you, franchises, um, you all in that, and you in that goddamn outfit. Um, yeah, the shorts. <laughs> you and that, yo, Kevin. You really come up. You bring these characters to life. How uh -huh. how is it working with the Rock? He is so inspirational and on his shit like you. Man. Yeah. How is it working with him? I'm being honest with you, man. It's tough. He's not talented, you know. So for me, you know, working with a guy like that, get out, Roxy. Working with a guy like that is tough because you know I got to do so much. My back hurts from tired from carrying his ass. Right. Know? But uh, ultimately, we make it work. Now I'm joking, man. Uh, that big, that big guy is actually he's he's one of the best, man. When I tell you the the friendship is one thing. I will and want to do the things that haven't been done. It, it it matches, you know. We're we're on the same page. So for that, I'm I'm grateful. I'm grateful for him because you know, with without him, uh, a lot of the things that are the biggest things in my career wouldn't have happened. And I know, right, right. Uh, same thing vice versa. But there's a great there's a great yin and a yang that yes. we have in such a high level of appreciation. So I appreciate it. Y'all y'all got to go. Come on, I'm on face. Get out. Look, he's on with Uncle Kenny. Get out the goddamn Jesus, office. Come on, y'all. Y'all just y'all sitting here just for what? Sweating. Oh, before before my next question, I want to show you one of my favorite pictures of all time. I have I have a couple of you on my wall, but this is one of my favorite pictures of all time. Hey, do I remember that? I remember that. Isn't that I crazy? That. that was a Kenny, crazy. I remember that. People don't understand how. I don't think people understand your real impact. I don't think they understand that there's not a negative piece of conversation that's attached to Kenny Burns. Thank you, man. There's not a negative piece of information, conversation. Like, you're, you're one of the most loved guys in our, in our space, and, and you always have been, man. You know, at the end of the day, we all fuck with you. Your energy you. is where it's supposed to be, uh, and you want nothing but good for other people. And I think in return, we want the same for you. So that's, that's, that. a, that's a moment just to, to throw some love your way as well deserved because that to me, that's, that's one of the dopest things about KB. Thank you, you bro. You're, you're, you're one of the most loved. I appreciate sure. it. And I love you too, brother. Now, I just want to get into the Think Like a Man thing really quickly because that's okay. one of my, my favorite movies. Is there going to be another Think Like a Man franchise something you know what i mean it's Real too Packer, good of a group here. it's too good of a group of of people you know like from all of the the actors and actresses that played the part and think like a man you know we we had such a good thing and had it back then to where we got it right i wouldn't if we got it right i wouldn't mind playing with that group that's a it's a good group of people, Yo, man. You got you guys synergy, bro. Like, there's often in his, in the history of movies, you have Boys in the Hood with Cuba and you know that group and Ice Cube and what that was. You have you know what I'm saying like Trey, Trey uh, Lorenz Tate and 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 that, but they didn't do multiple movies. Then you have mm -hmm. the ones that did multiple movies as a unit, mm -hmm. and I just see that being one of the best pairings. I would think like a, I think like a man cast is one of the best casts, especially when you're talking about groups. I mean, you're you're, you're looking at an eight, you know, that's an eight. I believe that was eight actors and actresses. That was eight of us, and yeah. as a as a cast in a movie, and to knock something like that out the park and have success, that's unreal. So I I wouldn't mind going yeah. if we got that right and we got the script right and we knew the project that we were all going in for. I'm I'm all for it. I'm and I'm gonna tell you another top five pairing for you ever. Regina Hall. I you love Regina. and Regina Hall I love Regina. are so necessary, bro. Like there Regina. has to be several more movies. We're working on the movie work. now. I'm working on the movie right now with Regina. That's actually that's what I've been doing since we've uh, been in quarantine. I've I've wow. had that pin to the pad and you know, you're just trying to write 
for the next thing, the next things that are going to act as the next wave of content. You know, IP is king. So yeah, you you, you and that. Regina, you and Regina, I, you know, and I I don't think she gets her props no on the comedic side of acting as well as acting, right? Not she, she doesn't get it at the level that she should. She is hilarious, bro. Regina Hall is pound for pound, pound for pound, the funniest comedic actress walking walking the planet. I will I love we'll round of applause. Please put the oh, claps down there for Regina Hall. Put the claps, will, ladies and gentlemen. I will go Somebody on. let Regina Hall know that we're giving her her flowers, please. We love her. Regina Hall has yet to get her full, you know, her full wave of acknowledgement and success the way it should be. I right. think that they're going to come because Regina still got projects and, and, you know, more to give. And I think this idea that we're working on now is so strong for Regina and myself, but she literally is, there, there isn't a funnier person out there. Yeah, man. I, I won't recognize there isn't. So let me ask you a question on the comedy side, man. You are, I mean, you sold a million tickets on one of like, what, like, like, I mean, you've done, you've broken records. You've done stadiums mm -hmm. in your hometown. You've done arenas around the world. Mm -hmm. You've taken comedy to another level. And I know because of Laugh Out Loud, you wanted to have that to groom talent and see talent and give opportunity to young comedians. What young comedian is on Kevin Hart's radar? My guys. You know, uh, when, I, when I talk about the, these guys aren't younger, but... You know, I would love to see Naeem, Spank, Joey. I would love to see those guys branch off and break out. Uh, they're all about to do an hour special. We're filming this special. This year, we were supposed to be doing it, but we had to push that back. Right. Um, you know, Lil Rel has always been a favorite. Yeah. I think Lil Rel is a very, very funny talent, man. Um, Michael Che. Uh, Mike, very funny yeah. guy, man. Mike's a very, very funny guy. Um, who else? Who else, guy? Uh, you know, there's it's a it's a nice it's a nice list, but I think it's open that world for that next young guy or girl. It's it's open, you know, it's yeah. open season to see who can jump into that spot. You got some talented younger cats, you know, DC Young Fly. Is a funny talented Hilarious. cat. Hilarious. You know, he's a funny. You gotta he's tell a funny him to guy. remove that tattoo, though. I mean, uh, makeup could do it, but you gotta, gotta get a nice thumbprint. You got a nice thumbprint in the middle of his head. But he, but uh, he sings too, though, Kevin. He's a, he's an no, incredible he's a singer. Talented guy. Yeah, I'm telling you, he's a talented cat. Um, out there, there's, there's, there's tons of people in that space, but the question is, who is going to really define? themselves and find that signature moment for people to go, oh, shit. You know what I mean? Oh, shit. Yeah. And that's what I'm working hard to find as well. I mean, that's on Laugh Out Loud Network, that's our priority. It, it ain't about me. It's about finding that next star, the, yeah. the star of tomorrow. Well, and, I, I want to I wanna let our followers know this. So there is a um, project that Kevin has. It's a project I have with Will Packer. It's the exact same project, right? And I'm going to tell you how life works. So I had a project called Fight Night. It's mm -hmm. the story about the Ali, you know, the biggest heist in Georgia history. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I go through this whole thing. It took me two years, Kevin. I worked so hard. You know, Packer gave me an opportunity, got involved, boom, boom, got the deal with Universal, right? We had, they announced it. Two months later, and I told, I, I called you, but I, I, we didn't ever talk about it. But I called, well, I was like, yo, get Kevin in pocket. Literally, three months later, I think you and Will announced Uptown Saturday Night. Mm -hmm. Similar stories, amazing story. Sa Uptown Saturday Night obviously has, you know, lineage from a cultural standpoint. But I want to say to you, however that story is told, it has to be done by you. So whether yeah. you, whether that goes away and you come over here or whatever happens, yeah. you're the most important. And I'm going to tell you why. Because Uptown Saturday Night, can be or fight night could be this generation's Harlem Nights. Harlem Nights, yeah, that's and, the goal I, within it. And I promise you, bro, like you, uh, I mean, you know, you see, you know what it is. But I just want you to know. But you got you, a, you got an opportunity to take 
all of your favorite funny from from our generation and put them under the screen. And look, yeah. here's the here's the beauty of me. I don't I don't have grudges. I don't I don't have the 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 time to hold grudges in life. If if there's an opportunity to put, you know, your your favorite people that's attached to funny on screen and define our version of history, then you do that. And that's the whole goal with Uptown. You know, we're on I our fuck with you. I fuck with you. You're you're the realest and I wasn't gonna go there, but I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Like that's that's what life's about, bro. It's I don't I don't personally have the time. I, I just don't have the time. I fuck with to, you, Dad. That yeah, was real, bro. I don't. So when it comes to when it comes to what what is our you can't have your version of what that was without the people that helped define that version. So when you talk about our, our world of funny, you know, you gotta have a space where these guys can all get together in the same playing field and put egos aside. Like I don't I don't have the ego. I don't one man's success, a woman's success has nothing to do with mine. Yeah. And it's but know your Eddie person. know your your no I know I need you to know this though and own this. You're Eddie Murphy in the scheme of that. Um but and I say that respectfully because I think like when I look at when I look at Harlem Knights, mm -hmm. see Red Fox and Richard Pryor. You know what I'm saying? With Eddie Murphy and then Della it, I mean, it was, it was. Robin I, Harris. I mean, yeah, even Arsenio. Like, to Arsenio. See the, but you got to make that happen. And only yeah. you can make it happen, right? Because you will put aside everything to give the people what they want, bro. It is it is 100% the priority. Uh, like I said, we've, we're past the second draft. We're going into the third draft. We're going to get it right, but it can't happen until it's exactly that. It's got to be right. We're not, we're not half-assing this um, or rushing this to be just something that goes away in a blur. Like, I see this coming out, Black History Month, when we do it. Like, this is a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a real moment to make a big impact. So that's the focus. Uh, it always has been. We're getting closer. And I think as we get closer, you'll hear more about it. But just know I'm already on that page. All right, brother. Well, listen, man, I, you know, I, I commend you. You know, I, I wasn't going to go there and, 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 and talk about that. But the, the fact that you would put anything and everything behind for the people makes you a superhero, bro. So you just got to keep doubling down on those superpowers. And, and you know, that's all I got, man. I don't even got no more questions. I was my just talking to my partner. My guy. And, and you just, yeah, you keep fucking going, man. So, so family's good, everybody's good, your brother, listen, your father. Listen, everybody is good. Before we go, uh, I just want to say, you know, there was a point where I too was uh, a victim of what is this? What's going on? How real is it? Uh, let's not all make that mistake. Let's make sure we take this moment serious. Uh, stay home. You know what I mean? Stay home for the time being. Let's try to put this shit behind us so we can get back to life the way that we know it. Um, it, it takes us. Without us, we don't get past this. So as people, I want to say, let's just do what we're supposed to do. Stay in the house. Come out of this healthy. Uh, to our healthcare workers, you guys on the front line doing an amazing job. Shout out to all of you. Um, you know, I want to give a shout out to my partners uh, at Hungry for helping me deliver meals in Philadelphia. My partners at Beyond Meat. Uh, we've been feeding hospitals here in LA. Um, you know, there's there's a major surge of positivity and efforts from so many and good. And those moments are uh, what should be driving the conversation of the world today. The positivity of people trying to help other people. So let's keep that energy going. Let's keep it flowing. I love you. Uh, I can't wait to get back to you all. KB, I love you too, boy. I love you too, champ. Keep all going. Right. We're here. Be safe. All right. All right. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the legend, Kevin Hart. I need to see the hand claps for the legend. If you are not inspired, if you are not inspired by the likes of Kevin Hart, to be honest, just people with real game, man, real energy, real effort, real numbers on the board. There's a lot of people that can tell you a lot about nothing. But that's a man who has done it. He put one foot in front of the other, 
and he is living proof that you can become who you want to be, man. So please support him and all his brands. Um, the Kenny Burns Show will be back tomorrow, y'all. Um, fast, furious, and family. I don't, I don't even know how to describe Chris Ludacris Bridges any better than that. Tomorrow, Chris Bridges, AK Ludacris, um, will be joining us here on the Kenny Burns Show. Um, I got something heavy I got to get into right now, so that is a wrap for today's show. Please tell a friend to tell a friend. The Kenny Burns Show is here, baby. I love y'all. Peace.